We bless the Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and give you honor and praise. For mighty are you. You do exceedingly great things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. What a great day the Lord has ordained in Jesus' name to enter his presence, call upon his name, and see the mighty things God is doing in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord for his goodness, his love, and his mercy in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Welcome to our deliverance moments every night, Monday to Thursday. And we look forward to share the word of God, to pray together, but also to understand the ways of God. Uh, we welcome all of you that are joined in. I believe many of you are watching on Worship TV and others are watching on uh, Facebook and YouTube and others. If you joined in, please I welcome you and I ask you to call a friend, share with a friend and uh, call them and say, come on, let us come and let's come and pray together. Let's come and share the word of God together. Let's come and uh, flow in prayer. We are continuing in healing the family tree. But in particular this time, we are looking at the, using the court of heaven as an approach to healing the family tree. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Uh, we thank God for his glorious mercy that has joined us today. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. He is worthy to be praised. He is good and is great. Awesome in power in Jesus' name. We welcome you, Ishana. We welcome you, Carol. Welcome you, Yaba. The Lord bless you, those that are watching on YouTube and on Facebook. We are continuing in looking at restraining orders in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We bless the Lord for the great work he's doing. He is mighty. He is glorious. He is able. He is here in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. Give glory to the Lord. He is most mighty. He is good and is great. His name is great. His name is holy. His name is mighty. We bless the Lord as we worship him. As we give glory to his name. For he is good and he is mighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We welcome all of you. God bless you. Today we are going to go straight away in an emergency prayer. And we want us to, as we share with your friend, as we invite them, we're going to pray a prayer. It's not just a teaching, but a prayer. A divine restraining order. A restraining order is an legal, it's an order given against harassment, against stubborn enemies, to stop them from coming nearer than their victims. And I know some people, most of us have been victims of unrepentant witchcraft. Victims of poverty, victims of forces of darkness, territorial spirits, and familiar spirits. And so to, there are this moment in prayer where you call an intervention to restrain the enemy, to restrain the enemy. And, uh, and today we're going to go into different prayer directions where we are seeking an injunction and uh, a divine restraining order. 
if you look in scripture, you find that there are many times where there was the order, you know. And I want to start with a scripture. Many of us may know Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 25, 21. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 21. Today we're looking at the divine restraining order. Proverbs, we can have that scripture on the screen. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse uh, and verse and verse 21. Proverbs 19.21 Many plans are in a man's mind. There are many plans in man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that would stand. The Lord's counsel that will stand. So the counsel of the Lord is, the plan of the Lord is what will stand because you can stand. You can stand and claim the plan of the Lord. You see? So, you know, there are many ways that God put a restraining order and stop the enemy. You know, scriptures say in the book of, uh, uh, in the book of, uh, 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 First Samuel chapter 7. First Samuel chapter 7. So the, uh, let's look at First Samuel chapter 7 and verse 13 and 15. First Samuel chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. So the Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. The Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. Hear that? They, couldn't, they did not come anymore. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. And the hand of the Lord, and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. Look at that. All the days of Samuel. Verse 8. Verse uh, 14. Then the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel from Eklon to Gath. And Israel recovered its territory from the hands of the Philistines. And also there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Verse 15 tells me, uh -huh. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. So in the days of Samuel, there was a restraining order. That, so the Philistines were subdued and they did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. Praise the Lord. What I'm going to declare and decree today, there are things that will never come near your tent if you believe, sir, amen. There are there are sicknesses that will never appear in your body from tonight. I have many testimonies, many from different parts of the world, people that we prayed restraining order and said, Pastor James, this man who was oppressing me and tormenting me, God restrained him and kept him away from the nation for seven years. This lady was telling me, you know, there was this guy who was a very bad boss on this lady. And he vowed that this sister would lose her job. You know what happened? When we prayed a restraining order, he was kept out of the country for seven years. That is eight, seven years ago. And she was telling me today, said, Pastor James, do you remember seven years ago when you were starting ministry? We prayed a restraining order. This guy, they kept post posting him and posting him out of the country for seven years. He could not come near. And that is what the Bible is talking about here in the book of uh, First Samuel. That they did not come anymore. Somebody note that word. They did not come anymore into the territory of Israel. So the, some divine rational orders are designed or let me say, the, this restraining order was dis designed to restrain demonic activity from crossing over into specific and protected 
area. It may be your house. It may be your country. It may be a plague may be moving everywhere. But then there is a bloodline. There is a line. It's restrained demonic activity. A plague may not come to your house even when the plague is moving in the entire city because you've asked for a divine restraining order around your house. There may be these economic uh, things that are happening right now when people are saying economies are failing. And then you release a divine restraining order. You look at this example that's in the days of Samuel, there was no war. The hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. Hallelujah. And that is what's going to happen to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ today. A divine restraining order. I'm going to show you how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, let me give another example of a restraining order in the book of a in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 22. Then he also went to Ramah and came to the great wall. Are we there? 1 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 22. Then he also went to Ramah and came to the great wall that is at Sehu. So he asked and said, where are Samuel and David? And someone said, indeed, they are in Nayoth in Ramah. In verse 23, so he went there at Nayoth in Ramah, and then the Spirit of God was upon him also, and he went on and prophesied until he came to Nayoth in Ramah. In verse 24, and also he stripped off his clothes and prophesied before Samuel in a like manner and lay naked. And lay naked. He lay naked there. And so also among, so lay, okay, strips lay naked all that day and all that night. Therefore they say is so also uh, a pro is also is so also among the prophets. Is so also among the prophets. So uh, praise the Lord. I'm sorry. So uh, we're looking at an instance like Saul is, is coming to, to look for David and Samuel. Sorry, and, and, uh, and, and Samuel. And he wants to kill them. But then God restrains him that when he comes, when he comes to, to, the, to the, this region in Nayoth, he finds that Instead of killing them, his behavior is restrained. And he ends up, he ends up prophesying. Look at a, a scripture like in the book of Revelations chapter 20 and verse 1 and 3. Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 and 3. Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 and 3. Praise the Lord. Revelation chapter 20 and verse and verse, uh, verse 1 and 3. Revelations, if you are there, we're going to read together in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're going to read together that scripture in Revelation chapter 19. And I believe it is one of those scriptures that we're going to quote together in Jesus' name. We thank God. divine restraining orders. Look at that. Revelations chapter 20 verse 1 and 3. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit. Having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him, I love that, and bound him for a thousand years, a restraining order. Bound him for a thousand years. Look at verse 3. Verse 3. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and sit, set a seal on him so that he should deceive, he should deceive 
the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after the things, he must be released for a little while. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Satan is also restrained. There is a good example I always want to look at uh, uh, in the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 10. When Joshua also asked for a, res a restraining order, a various order, and stopped nature. If you look at uh, Joshua chapter 10 and verse 12, then Joshua spoke to the Lord. Joshua chapter 10 and verse 12. Joshua spoke to the Lord in that day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon and mourn in the valley of Ayazalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till people have re had revenge upon the en their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashal? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. Look at the authority God has given man who has understood the principle of a restraining order. Joshua is restraining. Joshua is asking God and he said, let the sun stand still. It will not rain. Divine restraining order. It stops the sun for a whole day until the children of Israel revenge their enemies. Maybe the last example I look at is in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 20. A divine order is designed to protect the righteous from sinning against God. Look at uh, Genesis chapter 20 and verse 3. I welcome all of you that are watching. God bless you so much. Uh, I want to know that you are there. Dale will bless you. Mel sent God bless you so much. It's awesome victory of healing today. I'm giving the last example and then we're gonna, I'm going to take you in the prayer of the divine restraining order. Against witchcraft. Against afflictions. Against the spirit of poverty. Against premature death. Against scarcity. A restraining order around the church. Against the speed of that breaks marriages. And right now, I'll request you if there is an issue in your life that is so urgent as we go in the healing of the family tree that you can say, Pastor James, that is my issue. I want, I want to agree with the saints all over the world as we go in the courts of heaven tonight. I want to agree with the saints concerning my marriage, concerning my children, concerning my health. You go on your phone, you go on your, on your computer and send that message to me right now. On my WhatsApp, on my email, on my, on my number. That I may add you on the issues that I'm going to present before the Lord for a divine restraining order. The Bible tells me that where two of us on earth agree on anything and pray. And they are going to ask the Lord for a divine restraining order against premature death, against affliction. There is a disease that has harassed you and stalked you and oppressed you for the last many years. And it keeps coming. It goes and comes. But we come to that moment where we say never again. A divine restraining order. I've got testimonies this day. Many people that prayed with me last night Oh, God worked miraculous. People were healed. Someone had, had given up on a certain uh, appointment just after praying last night. Got a call to appear before the bosses. And minutes, the appointment was approved. And many others that have learned the secret of healing the family tree and going into the, the, the courts of heaven. And I apply the principle of praying the courts of heaven. And that I have seen God healing in the mighty name of Jesus. So please, let's continue, John. God bless you. Okay, look at uh, Genesis chapter 20. Divine restraining order. Verse 3. But God came to Abimelech 
in a dream by night and say to him, Indeed, you're a dead man because of the woman whom you've taken, for she's a man's wife. Wow, look at that. Verse, next verse, verse 4. But Amalek had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Verse 5. Did, did he not say to me, she's my sister, and she even, she herself said, he's my brother. In the integrity of my heart and in of my hands, I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, yes, I know that you did, you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch Ha! Look at that. I withheld. The word withheld you is restrained you. I restrained you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. I restrained you from, okay? If we can proceed, look at that. Yes, I know that you did this integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you, did not let you touch her. Wow. Wow, look at that. Restraining. Restraining. Even it happened in Genesis chapter 12. If you look at chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 17. The Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah. And the Lord, with cause of Sarah, Abraham's wife, and Pharaoh called Abraham and said, why is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now therefore, here is your wife, and take her and go your way. Look at, you know, we can, we can mention many, 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 many more many, many uh, examples of divine, of the, of the, of divine restraining orders. But uh, quickly today, because it's a day of acts, today we're gonna not, not going just to teach, we want to, we want to take action. So for a, a divine restraining order, one, Number one, you must stand in the finished work of Jesus Christ. You must stand. Your, your, your stand is the finished work of Jesus Christ. Number two, there must be repentance. You must be under the, the speed of repentance. Okay? And number three, you have to ask the court to be seated. Because you don't ask for a restraining order on the street. And then you present your case with boldness. You stand on the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's very important. Number two, you must repent. Number three, you ask the court to be seated. And then you present your case with boldness. And by faith, you receive the verdict of court. So, let's start right away. Let's start right away. Let's start right away. I'm waiting for friends. I know each one that is watching, you are sharing with friends. You are calling them. You are waking them up. Because something supernatural, something great is going to happen to you. It's going to happen to your family. It's going to happen to your household tonight as we're going to we go in prayer. In prayer. Amen. We're going to deal with different kind of forces that have been stubborn. Like the force in the book of Acts chapter 13. There's a force in the book of Acts chapter 13. A man called by Jesus. If we can open our Bibles briefly to Acts 13. A force of witchcraft. 
that has hindered the move of God. And until the man of God, Paul, raised a prayer against the Bajiza spirit. And I'm telling you, that is, if you look at verse 6, verse 4, Acts chapter 13, verse 4. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Caesarea, and from there they sailed to Cyrus. And when they arrived in Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now when they had gone through the island of Petmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was but Jesus, who was with the preconsul, Paul, Paul Asegius, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, Elimas, the sorcerer, for so his name was translated, we withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. Now, look at what Paul said. Because now Paul is preaching the gospel and is face to face with the power of sorcery, the sorcerer, by Jesus, Elimas, withstanding them. Then Saul, verse 9, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy, with, with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, will you not cease perverting the straight way of the Lord? And now, indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Look at that. <coughs> Excuse me. And immediately a dark mist fell on him. And he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Look at that. Paul put a stop on sorcery by a restraining order. Say enough is enough. And then the preconsul, when he saw that he had been, you, you, you know, this witch, this sorcerer, but Jesus, O oh Elimas, the sorcerer, was withstanding, resisting the gospel, resisting the preaching of the gospel, like in many communities. And Paul put a stop by rebuking him and saying, you will be blind. Wow. Wow. God is doing many things right now. Oh, hallelujah. We bless the Lord for what God is doing. I feel even today there are many of you that are going to be delivered from witchcraft prayer. There are many that people are praying witchcraft prayers and you are a victim of witchcraft prayer. When they are trying to manipulate you and manipulating events and break your marriage. But today, that witchcraft prayer, that they've been stubbornly shooting your life is coming to an end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm waiting for your request, those that are sending them, that are saying, Pastor James, oh, tonight, please, I want to join you. I want to pray with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Rest a breakthrough in employment and finances. Okay, we'll do that. that. There is no name, but I know God knows your name. This is Tabitha. Uh, we are going to grow, uh, trying to conceive. We are going to agree with you for conception in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We're going to stand with Amos. Okay. Pray for Amos. Mm, alcoholic for many years. His deliverance. I've prayed all sorts of prayer. So today Amos, we're going to bring Amos in the courts of heaven. Okay. My, my brother, spirit of rage and anger. Okay. Seven, seven years, you've lost your hair. And your father's blood and thrown. So we're going to stand with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now I ask a divine receiving order based on the real okay. I know my 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 sister, my my daughter, Maggie, I'm gonna stand with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God, for healing or divine receiving order against schizophrenia, 
uh, pray for Ashana. We're going to release her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So everyone right now, get ready. Get your book, get your pen, get your time to pray, get your, get your, your people together. Because, uh, okay, Catherine, we're going to stand with you, uh, mentioning you before the Lord. Because the time to go into the court of heaven in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We thank God for the great work he's doing right now as we come for a divine restraining order. We're going to deal with the issue of bipolar disorder right now to stop taking the meds. Someone is, okay, I know that, that brother, I know that sister. Uh, there's Nyeri. We're going to stand with you, pray with me concerning my marriage and the plague of strange women. We are going to ask for a divine restraining order against strange women in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ. Wow, what a great moment. I feel the Lord is doing a mighty work right now. Ah, we are going to agree. Margaret, I'm going to agree with you for a divine restraining order that they will not monitor you. They will not follow you. Any evil claim on your inheritance, the, the Lord God stop that claim in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We found the Lord, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. What a great night. Now, Get your book and get your pen, and we f I first give some instruction. The first one, you must mention your entry. How do you enter? You say, Heavenly Father, I stand in your courtroom because of the blood and finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. So that is your stand. Write it somewhere. I, I stand in your court because of the blood and finished work of Jesus Christ. And I have come to receive. Write it somewhere. I hope they can put those prayers there. I have come to receive your righteous judgments. Heavenly Father, I ask that the court of heaven be seated. According to Daniel chapter 7 verse 10. Let's go again. Heavenly Father, I stand in your court because of the blood and finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's number one. Number two, I have come to receive your righteous judgment over my life. Number three, I ask the court of heaven to be seated according to Daniel chapter 7. And I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We'll be sending these prayers again today. I know they were not yet prepared, but let me just, because I'm leading one by one. And you need the, now that's the first one. Heavenly Father, I stand in your court because of the blood and finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I have come to receive your righteous judgment over my life. Heavenly Father, I ask that the court of heaven be seated according to Daniel chapter 7. Verse 10. And now, you know the first stage now you are presenting yourself. And the second one is to call upon your witnesses. To call upon witnesses. Because you, before you mention the restraining order, you need to call the witnesses. So you say, Father, I call upon your holy angels to be witnesses. That's very important. I call upon the blood of Jesus to be a witness. And the word of God. Hallelujah. That's very important. So you've done that already. And one of the qualifications of standing in the courts of heaven and to be really hard, go to issue a divine restraining order is an attitude of gratitude. You must enter with thanksgiving. So after you've declared your intention for God to listen to you, what do you do? You say, Father, I thank you for allowing me to stand before you and to address the court of heaven. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of revelation. I thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for the call on my life. 
I thank you for my family. I thank you for the anointing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That is very important. Thanksgiving. You have presented yourself in the courts. Now you have called the witnesses. And you thank God. You give thanks. Before you stand in repentance. So after that you are going to repent. And I repent. What are you repenting? I repent for any. Someone say any. Any and everything. That would be stopping my destiny. From becoming a reality. Any. And everything that would stop my prayers. And you say, Father, in your repentance, do quickly, in your repentance, offer a sacrifice. What sacrifice? Your body. And you say, Father, I present myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before you. Holy and accept before you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord I ask that any place in me. That is displeasing to you. That is unrighteous before you. Would be unveiled. So I can repent of it. And then. That's very important. The next one. Let the blood of Jesus. Speak on my behalf. Let the blood of Jesus. Speak on my behalf. Let the blood of Jesus. Somebody said let the blood of Jesus. Speak on my behalf. And Lord I place before you. In a place of sin. Concerning wrong motives. And wrong associations. And in a place where. I have not guarded my heart. Forgive me. So you go through repentance. And then. After the repentance, I'm going to lead you into the prayer, but after the repentance, it's very important to know which scripture you are standing on. And you mention the purpose of the order. For example, you're dealing with witchcraft or sickness or whatever the order you've sent and all these kind of issues, finances. So you must quote like this and say Heavenly Father the righteous judge it is clear someone say it's clear that premature death it's clear that poverty it is clear that witchcraft would do great injury to my life destiny and inflict damage to the purpose of God now, you are reporting that thing. You are saying, Heavenly Father, it is clear that these people, these powers, this poverty, this disease, would do great injury to my life, my destiny, and will inflict damage to the purpose of God. Wow. You are telling God, I, my heart is your purpose. My, my desire is to do your will. But this thing, what is it? Alcoholism, addiction, schizophrenia, bipolar, this affliction would do great injury to my life, my destiny, and inflict damage on the purpose of God for this person. The purpose of God and the will of God for this child, for this marriage, in the name of Jesus. And that's what I'm saying right now. That Almighty God is clear that schizophrenia would do great injury to Anu, to her destiny, and will afflict damage to your purposes of her, in her life. What, what issue now are you bringing before the Lord? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, it's clear that this condition, that 
these evil claims on Margaret, these, this sickness and disease on, on Christine, this one will do great injury to her life, her destiny, and will bring a lot of damage to the purpose of God in her life, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, that is the reason I come to you tonight for, this, for my brothers and sisters that have sent their prayer requests and they that are believing God in the mighty name of Jesus. For, the, for Doreen, for Nancy and Doreen, if that this request, if this own is not insured for her marriage and financial breakthrough, the enemy will, will do great injury to her life and her destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, right now, including Violet Nantairo, I bring her before you. And Father, it's clear that if a divine restraint order is not ensured, that she will suffer so much witchcraft. She, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that today she's 47 years. She's believing God for healing. And Father, it's clear that if she's not healed and the divine restaurant order is not ensured against fibroids, that would do great injury to her life and her destiny and would damage the purpose of God for her life in the name of Jesus. Friends, I'm, I'm, I'm believing God with you right now. I'm believing God with you, Tapa, for your husband in Jesus' name. We are saying right now, we are seeking a divine restraining order. For those that are believing God as a pastor James, please stand with me. There's my friend uh, is believing, please pray for divine order against oh, against your, okay, uh, it praying for Ashray, Tracy, and Nicole. We are believing God for that breakthrough in the name of Jesus. And the rest. Whatever, whatever you're watching from right now, there is something you need to put before the Lord and inform the Lord in this court gathering. Because we are standing in the court of heaven. The books are opening and the blood of Jesus is witnessing. And now you are saying, Lord, it's clear that premature death, it's clear that poverty it's clear that this thing, if the order is not given, and so therefore you go deeper and say, I repent for my sin, my personal transgressions, and for the iniquity of my bloodline, that may have opened a door for premature death. Say that prayer. Father, I repent for my sin, my personal transgressions, and for the iniquity of my bloodline, that may have opened a door for premature death, for financial losses, for mental illness, for bipolar disorders, in the life of so and so, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, that every sin of my forefathers that the enemy would be using as a legal right to build cases against me and to deny me my destiny, I ask the blood of Jesus would just wash them away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, you've asked all that, you've repented, and this is the re now the real prayer. This is the real prayer. And the righteous judge, I now ask that a divine restraining order against premature death, against witchcraft, against sorcery, against this disease, against fibroids, against afflictions and infirmities, against mental illness, against whatever, would be issued on my behalf. Pray that prayer. Righteous judge, 
I ask that a divine restraining order against what? Against the speed of premature death. Against the demon harassing me in dreams. Against speed husbands. Against incubus and succubus. I ask that a divine restraining order against what? Against witches and wizards in this city. Against diviners. O Rabba Ko Shia Laba. Against the curse of poverty. Against the wasting spirit. Against strange spirits. Against familiar spirits. Against territorial witches. Against evil politicians. Against kings of darkness. Against wickedness in heavenly places. I ask that a divine restraining order. Against death. Against the strange woman. Against the spirit of adultery. Sexual immorality. Blindness. In the mighty name of Jesus. O Rikarababakoshia. Heavenly Father. Righteous judge. I now ask. That a divine restraining order. Against sickness and disease. Against the spirit of barrenness. Be, it would be issued on my behalf. Someone say on my behalf. Oh, Rabba Koshire. On my behalf. On my behalf. A divine restraining order be issued against financial embarrassment. On my behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Let me hear you praying now. Oh, hallelujah. There is a church that the enemy has been harassing. There's a ministry that has been harassed for years. No growth, nothing. The witches have harassed you. They keep hitting, they keep scattering people. They keep destroying the property of the church. Whatever you buy, the enemy destroys. Now call upon and say, a divine restraining order against this demon, against this personality, against the evil systems, against wicked leaders, against the officials that are wicked. Maybe some of you, their powers, their forces in your community that have harassed you, that have harassed your children. You wake up the night and your child, your daughter, your son is harassed, oppressed, and you can't help every night. I'm talking to somebody right now saying, For Pastor James, I look at my daughter and I'm helpless. This demon oppresses her. And I can't, I've shouted, there's nothing I can do. But right now, ask that a divine restraining order against schizophrenia, against the demon of bipolar disorder, against the demon of autism, be issued on your behalf and on behalf of that Aiden. That son in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father we come in agreement. As saints. As sons of God. On earth. Standing in your court today. Seeking a divine restraining order. In Jesus name. Let me hear your prayer. Let me see you sharing. Why don't you share with friends on your pages? Because this is a way of ministry also. Why don't you share? Why don't you call others? We're still praying. Why don't you call friends? Because we are now asking that a divine restraining order against sickness, against the agents of disease and illnesses, be issued right now on your behalf. From the court of heaven. Be assured right now. From the supreme court of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are almost losing your job. Because someone is harassing you. I see people. Who, are, who have been displaced. You are always displaced. You were appointed. But you have no office. There are two, two brothers. And one sister. Watching right now. 
You are in and out, in and out of hospital all your life. Every money you get, all the money you get is taken into hospitals because of a harassing disease, an autoimmune disease, a cancer, a blood disorder. And it has been moving from one generation to another generation. You can cut the cord and ask for a divine restraining order tonight. Oh, hallelujah, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, deal with right now. Yes, we can restrain a divine restraining order against autism. And there will not be no attacks, no episodes again. I stop those episodes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I now ask for a divine restraining order against epileptic episodes, against autism episodes, against schizophrenia episodes, those waves and attacks that come at a given time. There is a permanent injunction against the spirit of affliction in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you. I decree and declare that any form of disease, any form of disease, affliction, the devil has ever issued or orchestrated against your life, they are now cancelled in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that any and all forms of affliction, of plans of affliction, plans Father, I ask that every plan of the enemy, the plan of demons and witches, against the people that I am agreeing with tonight, those plans be dismantled, be cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that all forms of affliction, all forms of death, premature death, all forms of of accusations, of forms of oppression are cancelled right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare right now. Nicholas, I agree with you in Jesus' name. Deo gracious, I agree, sorry. Deo, sorry, I agree with you. Mary, I agree with you in the mighty name of Jesus. You need to invite people right now in the few minutes we are remaining with. Because I decree and declare that any form of premature death the enemy planned all orchestrated against your son be cancelled right now in Jesus' name. And now you need to say, Heavenly Father, after you've decreed, you've asked a divine restraining order and now you need to receive this restraining order by faith. Say, I receive. I receive this divine restraining order by faith in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that my God, you shall fulfill all you have decreed and all that's written in my book of destiny in Jesus' name. Mm. I decree and declare that it shall be fulfilled as I have asked according to divine protocol. According to divine protocol I receive this divine restraining order. It is now in place. Because the Lord said touch not the anointed of the Lord. Meaning that's a divine restraining order. A thousand may fall on your side. Ten thousand on your right hand. But they will not come near you. But you will observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. That is a divine restraining order right now. I bestow upon you Psalms 91. I bestow upon your children and your children's children Psalms 91. The promises of Psalms 91. The Lord has ordered me to bless. No one can curse. 
I bless you today. And therefore, by the decree of that blessing, schizophrenia is completely destroyed and it will never come again. Any demon executing schizophrenia, any demon, powers of darkness, executing bipolar, executing autism, executing epilepsy, executing financial embarrassment, right now, I order its binding and its destru destruction. It will never, never again will it come near you. A thousand may fall on your side. Ten thousand on your right. But they will not come near you again. They will not come near you in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus Christ. That is a decree. I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. I declare and decree that no evil shall come near your taint in the mighty name of Jesus. No disease, that disease that has been there for the last 12 years will never come again in your body. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Sickness, illness, witchcraft, sorcerers, diviners, warlocks, witches, wizards cannot come near your house. Let them be far away. Let them be far from your city. Let them be far. I decree that they are not allowed. I order in the mighty name of Yeshua. That witches, wizards, warlocks, diviners, sorcerers, prognoscators, they cannot come near your life again. Somebody say amen. No more evil episodes. No more evil attacks. No more waves of epilepsy. No more witchcraft embarrassment, wicked harassment and oppression. Familiar spirit. Father, thank you and give you glory. Because I hear right now. You have put a hedge. Somebody asked for a hedge on your life. I asked for a hedge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let the hedge be put in place now. The hedge of healing. The hedge that disease and sickness cannot come into your body again. Let your body repel all kind of sickness and disease. Never again will you agree with affliction. Never again will you agree with poverty. Never again will you agree with alcoholism and addiction. The wasting spirit will never attack you again. I put a hedge around your children and your children's children. I put a hedge around your spouse. No strange woman will touch your husband again. Because there's a hedge now. There's a restraining order. No strange woman, witch, prostitute, can come near your husband. No, everywhere they go, thou, the Lord shall repel. There's a hedge of fire, like the hedge that was in the days of Job. A hedge of fire, a protection over your, your territory. They will not enter the city where you are in. In the mighty name of Jesus. They will not spy on you. Their eyes will never see you again. Their ears will never hear you again. Every time they search in the spirit. They cannot find you. You are invisible. You are putting on. The crock of invisibility. A cloak of invisibility. The garment you are dressed in. Is a cloak of invisibility. They cannot see you. They cannot hear you. The powers of hell, the decrees of hell cannot see you again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The orders of hell, the decisions of hell do not affect you. The decrees of hell, the decrees of witches and wizards, their plans cannot work in you. The Lord, I decree and declare, I decree and declare, the Lord shall scatter and frustrate Whatever has been pursuing your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is pursuing your marriage from the kingdom of darkness, from wizards and witches, strange women, the Lord shall frustrate them all days till eternity. Till the end of the earth, whoever attacks you shall be frustrated, shall be disappointed and scattered. The thunder and the anger of the Lord shall smite every tongue that rise against you in judgment. Every hand that points at you shall be dried because God has decreed and put an order of protection. 
divine immunity. Divine immunity. Protected by angels. You are, pro you are under the protection. A divine protection of heaven. Your marriage is under divine protection. Sealed. It has both been put under protection of heaven. Like when someone is put under the protection of the state. The same is happening right now. The power of God. The order of heaven. Is upon your children and your children's children. For protection and preservation. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare. Today. Evil shall not come near your house. Now. If you say. Amen. Evil shall not come near your business. And those of you that are saying, Pastor James, now there's a restraint on in place. But I need an order of provision, an order of favor. I need an order like the order that Esther received. Father, I want to, uh, Father, I agree with my brothers and sisters right now, an order of compensation, divine compensation. Let there be compensation right now, the years that the enemy had wasted. Someone who's worked for years and not paid, someone whose land that was taken, someone's body that has been oppressed. Somebody, as I speak right now, I sense. A warmth going through your body. And those tumors are freshed out right now. And your body is like a 17 year old. It's a new body right now. Something is living. A force is coming out of your body. And God is compensating your daughter for the years the enemy have oppressed her. The demons that have been sitting in her belly in her chest. Cannot stay there right now. They are flushed out by the power of the Holy Spirit. Satan, you cannot keep holding that man. You cannot keep holding that marriage. Your time is over. I command you demon spirit. I command you evil spirit. I command you human spirit and wizards. Let go. Because your time is over. Let go, you false prophet. Your time is over. I disconnect you from the sun, the moon, and the stars. I cut you off from the connection of the waters. I overturn your thrones. Scatter your altars. Retrench your priesthood. Deny you access to the power of the spirit. Deny you access to the city. Like Elemas was blinded. The Lord smite you with blindness. You witch and wizard that has delayed God's people. Let go. Stubborn witchcraft. And repair and witchcraft. Be destroyed right now. You are destroyed right now. Because that lady. That child of God. That daughter of Abraham. That has been bent by the spirit of affliction. Has some miracle happening in the mighty name of Jesus. I see... This young my boy, 12 years, will never be afflicted again. Father, thank you for healing of Ryan right now. You are healing him in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, friends. The glory of the Lord, the presence of God is so sweet. He has received standing as a God. And he's saying it cannot go beyond that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. I thank God for you. Thank you for joining in every day, Monday to Thursday this season, especially this week. Today was a special session for the family for restraining order, and tomorrow we shall continue with healing the family tree. In the mighty name of Jesus. With, I said we come with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is very important. If you have issued, if you received a divine restraining order by faith, you need to give them to the Lord. This week I will emphasize giving because the Lord ordered me. You need to give your offering as a thanksgiving. Say, Lord, I thank you for a divine restraining order. Now, this is my seal. I seal.
by faith with a gift, with an offering. You can send your gift on that number on the screen, on my number, whatever the Lord tells you to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to bless those that are joining in the Pastor James. I want to be a blessing to the ministry. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, thank you for the orders that you've put in place. Let from today, your people receive victory upon victories. The testimonies I've heard today, more testimonies are coming after this divine restraining order prayer. I thank you that your people are celebrating the goodness of God. I thank you, Father, for those that are believing and they are confirming their faith by their giving to be a blessing to the work we are doing. I bless your name and I glorify you knowing that goodness and mercy of the Lord shall follow us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for being part of this fellowship. Uh, thank you for praying with us. And thank you for being a blessing. And thank you for God uh, using you to be a blessing to this ministry. Let's meet tomorrow sometime and we continue in the detailed of healing the family tree. In Jesus' name, have a good night.